everyone. Thank you for joining me for today's session on going lean by removing waste from your workflow with integration design. My name is Kate Stannard and I run the tech operations team for the research and insights department at Salesforce. Operations can mean many different things based on the company and industry you're in, but my team essentially focuses on managing the system's infrastructure, which can still be pretty ambiguous. So let's think about this like your house is plumbing. When everything is going well, it's running seamlessly in the background and takes very little of your attention. However, when a pipeline bursts in winter and you're running around looking for that shutoff valve, that's when you wish you had a plumber's phone number on speed dial who knew the infrastructure of your house inside and out. Operations is that team that does this for your software and has a mitigation plan in place or ideally has already implemented a solution to prevent issues from ever occurring. It's my job to think about software as a system and how data flows and users interact within this unified system across various tools, departments, and teams. An example would be building an integration between our project management tool ClickUp and our CRM Salesforce. The goal of this presentation is to use this integration as a case study for how to apply lean methodology to integration design specifically focusing on value stream analysis and the eight waste framework as tools to make our workflow more efficient by identifying bottlenecks. Value stream analysis is the component of lean methodology Toyota pioneered to add as much value to their production line as possible. By looking at each individual step and the time between steps and their relationships, Value can be as much defined by what you are doing to produce the end deliverable as it is by what you choose not to do. This is where evaluating waste can be incredibly helpful to determine what to eliminate and therefore how to increase efficiency. We can see here in a few examples of how Toyota has eliminated waste from their production process over the years. Instead of having technicians move from car to car, you can see the waste of transportation is solved for by having cars on a conveyor belt, then moving to each of the stations which perform a specific activity. Oddly enough, for a manufacturing plant, you also don't see a single toolbox in this video. That's because the waste of motion for the technicians has been solutioned for by only giving them the tools they need the parts they need and the quantity needed at the time needed so there are no superfluous movements in this process. These exoskeletons not only protect technician safety, which can be strained and injured due to repetitive motions, but it also reduces the waste of talent across departments. This is a great example of how interrelated small acts can be by protecting a skilled workforce. You're also reducing turnover caused by burnout and injury, which can in turn save waste in the HR department for the time not spent to find, hire, and train new employees, all of which can cause further waste and expense. So how does an auto manufacturing methodology apply to software integration? Consider instead of this RAV4 flowing along the conveyor belt, this is your data flowing between systems, team members, and different departments. Now let's apply this use case to the production line. What would happen if funding wasn't secured before an operations support request was then submitted? The conveyor belt would essentially come to a screeching halt as all of these various team members scrambled to then meet and determine if you had funding to continue. At this point, you already have at least two team members working on the project, which has already been assigned and is in the works. If the project is then canceled due to lack of funding, this causes the waste of talent because that resource was incorrectly assigned and not used to their fullest potential, as well as the waste of overprocessing for all of the work that they already put in that was then never used. This is where value stream analysis of your tools can help to identify each of those bottlenecks as a type of waste occurring, as well as start to highlight the interdependencies between systems that help us to distinguish between a symptom, such as an incomplete support request form, and the true root cause, which you may not even be aware of until we start a thorough discovery process. 
By analyzing your tools first, this gives you a great baseline and a neutral perspective of how tools and operate versus how they're perceived to operate. This will enable you to understand the current usage, data quality, data gaps, outdated or broken elements, compliance risks, as well as the current state of general admin maintenance that may or may not have been done based on if you've inherited this system. If all we were doing was to look at integrating these two tools and past data, it would be a very quick build. We'd take the project plan with key data fields from ClickUp, pass it to the support request form or custom object within Salesforce, and then push back any relevant data such as timelines and prioritization so that that project can then continue. However, there is also the human element to consider, especially if you're on a shared services team like most operations departments, there are probably a lot of people processes overlaid on top of your tools. This is where you can start to see the most amount of waste between technologies and human interaction, but it's generally deeply, deeply hidden. And as you start your discovery process, you're going to start to hear a lot of different and sometimes conflicting information some of which may be valuable technical requirements, some might be personal problems outside of your scope, some are bottlenecks to investigate and solution for, and some are even gonna be great ideas for completely different projects down the line. All of this data can lead your project off course into this chaotic spiral where you're probably not even solutioning for the root cause issue. This is where having a framework to standardize information and analyze from a neutral perspective helps you to remain a mediating third party of your project team that can truly see that holistic picture. At this point, you've heard a few examples of waste, so this should look pretty familiar. Now let's map out one of the bottlenecks we identified within this process. Based on all of the symptoms we were hearing, I identified one of the key bottlenecks to be the initial point of interaction, which was that operations request form. Consider a scenario where this form is not completed. An operations lead is then assigned to work with the requester, creating waste of talent by leveraging two resources to complete one task. More meetings, slacks, and emails are then exchanged to define the project and create the waste of waiting due to the additional time each of these interactions take, as well as the waste of motion for the actual act of sending those at slacks and emails. Let's say the project plan hasn't been fully fleshed out and incorrect for information is then incidentally passed along to the team, which then causes the waste of overprocessing as the operations lead takes that data that they have at hand to then pull reports and do the job they think they've been asked to do which is then not used by the requester because it's actually what they did not need. Or worse, it is used within the final deliverable, causing waste of defects by creating a deliverable that then needs to be reworked or completely scrapped and thrown out. These are just a few examples of how small inefficiencies can build upon one another to take more and more time away from creating value-adding work. By continuously asking why for each of these various bottlenecks and inefficiencies, we're able to get closer and closer to the true root cause that is then causing all of these other issues downstream. So what does this actually look like? Well, it's not pretty, as you can see by some of my early notes and designs. I was planning on folding my dirty laundry and creating a beautiful workflow of how this is supposed to work. However, that's a bit inauthentic to the actual process of what this looks like. As we gain new information, I iterate over and over and over again, as many times as necessary to make this as clean and simple a process for the end users. Most of this is the unseen plumbing behind operations that is continuously tweaked and iterated upon until we have a clean solution. There are many templates available for value stream analysis and how to use the eight waste framework. However, these are only as valuable as the information you're inputting. Personally, I adjust the format to the user's learning style. 
This creates a lot of extra rework on my end because the information does eventually need to be translated to technical requirements in a singular design to then build upon. However, the quality of information is so much higher than what you would traditionally get if you're just forcing everyone to complete a survey or doing the same interview questions over and over again. Um, it's really worth that added time putting in. For example, if you're working with a highly visual stakeholder, these flow charts are an excellent way to depict each of those steps so that you can then further dig into each of those granular levels that might be forgotten if you don't have a visual to work with. If you're working with a very abstract extroverted thinker that jumps from one topic to another in a very nonlinear fashion, using those flow charts is gonna be counterproductive to how they're naturally thinking and processing data. Instead, just letting them riff, taking extensive notes, and then trying to recap and interject as you have those various questions, that seems to work significantly better and then take that data back and build it into your model. Kenesthetic learners are some of my favorite because they frequently already have significant notes and documentation or even checklists written up. This is a great way to understand cleanly and clearly how processes are perceived, as well as to also jumpstart your own project training documentation and design planning documentation. By taking an in-depth look at the workflows, we were able to identify the true root cause and then design a more custom solution to leverage our talent and tools to their fullest potential. So after all of this, what did we eventually build? Project plans are created within ClickUp. A request then triggers a case to be created and generated within Salesforce CRM. This then passes back a shortened intake request form that only has the relevant information that the team manager needs to then assign out and allocate that work. Consider this to be a just-in-time inventory system where your inventory is the information and our goal is to only give the amount of data necessary to complete a specific task at a specific time to the individual that needs it. So instead of sending out a request form with 100 different data points, we're slimming that down to, say, have five different data points where you then allocate your resources based on the type of need uh, stated. Based on the information received, the case is then distributed through a round robin process. For cases that do not have funding secured, like in our earlier example, they'll be immediately routed to our operations financial lead that then works with the finance department and the research stakeholders to then see if we can find adequate funding for that project. That alone cuts out at least three other team members that are not necessary for that workflow. If it is a project that is then ready to go, we can route it to the operations recruitment lead based on work volume that they already have available, leveraging native case object functionality. Each queue has a customized workflow so that leads have the tools and the information needed to do very specific value adding work throughout their day. Thank you for joining me for today's session. As you can tell, I have a passion for this topic. So if you'd like to connect and chat further, please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn.